Hi folks, once again, uh, Gary from St. Croix going out on the boat this time. You can see there's a cruise ship back at the pier, so I'm certainly not diving anywhere near the pier. We're, uh, we're on this little boat from uh, the dive shop and uh, heading out over, uh, uh, going to go to two wrecks and a, uh, a reef for this particular trip. You can see the weather's cooperating pretty good. We had Hurricane Ernesto a couple days earlier. So the water's a little murky, but uh, we'll do what we can. So jumping in the water, the first thing which I uncovered, uh, and I, I, I'm going to try to get these animals correct, but you know, I may be wrong. I'm not an expert in this. Looks like a southern stingray just kind of making its way across the open bottom there. Uh, I've got a few shots like this in the video to uh, show the other divers that are with us. This little shot here is just us going through this uh, sort of piece of pipe, big, big piece of pipe that's laying on the bottom. I think it was a chamber of some type. I'm not sure. But anyway, you know, it's a little, little swim through. And there's holes everywhere, so it's not like you're in any sort of overhead environment by a long shot. Just kind of pass on through. And, you know, this is a, a good place for non-divers to see the undersea environment reclaiming you know this piece of debris that that people left in the ocean now here's another stingray just putzing along and uh, as you guys hopefully remember these things are the critters that killed Steve Irwin so uh, we don't uh, we don't mess with them too close there's that piece of pipe in the background there um, it, this area is a lot of open sand with some uh, pieces of coral scattered here and there. And, uh, you know, every, every time you see one of these little pieces of rock, you'll see lots of small fish making it their homes. And uh, if, if you're a person like that little black and yellow fish in the background, I believe that's a sponge eater. I can't remember the name of the fish, but all these little fish have got their own little names, wrasse and so forth. And uh, there's a squirrel fish, I think. Uh, but you can look these up as like a hobby, like, you know, butterfly collecting or bird watching or whatever and, and identify these different fish. It's kind of fun. I did that a few years ago and uh, really enjoyed trying to pluck the different species of fish out from the video. Not sure what that little guy down there was. Here's a, a larger chunk of, of coral, and uh, you can see a lot more fish there, including that barracuda in the background there, that long guy. That's a barracuda hanging out, and uh, they are pretty vicious little fish, so I don't tend to chase them or get too close to them. I'll let him have his way. And you can see he's just kind of hanging out there all nice and relaxed, which is what you want. Occasionally, you'll see the camera tilting around as I'm trying to manipulate my gauges and keep track of how much gas I'm using, how deep I am. In the foreground there is Lauren. That's our dive master. There's another shot of Lauren with her black and yellow fins down there leading the way. One of the sad things you'll see on these reefs is tires. There seem to be tires on every reef, and there's one there just disappeared off the lower left side of the screen. Uh, but you, the reefs seem to be home to a lot of that and um, you know, other occasional bits of, of durable goods that people just throw into the ocean. Not happy to see it, but uh, fortunately the ocean does claim these things in time. There's a good high shot with it showing two big chunks of coral with some of that sand interspersed. A couple of nice little fish down there just putzing around enjoying the day. It looks like a queen angel fish down there. Now you can tell them they, they have a regular angel fish shaped body, but they have a round 
area, like a crown right above their, their eyes. So a little queen angelfish trying to get away from me. And I, I try not to pursue these critters. I just kind of get close video of them and let them go their way. I don't want to harass them. In the shot there is the barge. This was the first of the two artificial reefs we, we went to here. And this, this barge has been here a while, apparently. You can see a lot of corrosion holes in the, in the hull. And you can see that sea life has attached itself to it and made quite a home. And that's, that's really kind of cool to me to see uh, this, this piece of uh, unused gear now turning into a, a good home for the fish. That, I believe, is a turtle heading towards the, uh, towards the ship in the background, which is a tugboat. So we had the, the two wrecks on this dive, the, the barge and the tugboat. And you know, it's a little murky here. This is the tail end of Hurricane Ernesto, which was a tropical storm when it hit St. Croix. And obviously it kicked things up a bit. You know, we're a couple days after that, and visibility is slowly returning uh, to the reef. And you see that line coming off the uh, starboard side amidships uh, of that tugboat. That's the line going up to a buoy, and our dive boat has attached itself to that line. They hooked into that line so that they're not dropping an anchor, hurting the coral. And you can see here this tugboat, a lot of sea life has attached itself there, and the fish have moved in. So it's building quite a nice little ecosystem on its own. And it's a good sized little tugboat. Um, pretty sure that a lot of the stuff was taken off this thing before it was sunk. And that makes it kind of open in a lot of spaces, which is nice. You know, less hazardous for some diver to try and penetrate the tug and get stuck in there. You, know, you can drop down here in these two open deck plates. Just kind of take a peek at the interior. And I did not bring a video light for this little dive. I just thought I'd bring a small flashlight in case I needed to look in a crack or something. And, and so all this is done with ambient light. You're not really seeing much of the color. I don't think I was too deep either. I think I was around maybe 50 to 60 feet deep on this. Somebody that knows this wreck will tell me otherwise. But you can see this thing's fairly open, so there's some wiring hanging down in there and torn apart machinery. This thing was probably salvaged in a shipyard somewhere, then towed to here and dropped. They tend to go through the ship and remove toxic materials before they, they sink the ship as an artificial reef, keep the oils and such to a minimum. And they also remove precious metals so they can high quality copper and brass and sell that as part of the uh, funding of a, a, a project to create an artificial reef. Little shot of another diver over there just looking around. We had a couple guys with us on this trip who were hunting lionfish, and uh, you can recognize them by the spear guns they carry. Oh, that looks like that's Lauren over there again. I see the yellow fins. And then there we see a, another handful of nice little fish that have made this wreck their home. He 
these are, I think the wrecks are, are very fun for me to explore because I recognize them as a man-made structure and you can see the sea growth of them and you can find different places where marine life has made a, a home. Occasionally you'll find little pipes and things like that and you'll see a lobster sticking his head out or something akin to that. You know, here we have all this growth on the side. I'm going to guess those are sponges. But this is, uh, this is the starboard side heading back toward that line which goes up to the dive boat. And all the divers that, that did this dive. And this dive, we got a little bit deeper early in this dive. We were down around 70-some feet deep and hung out for a little bit. So everybody's going to do a, a safety stop. We're all going to be hanging off that rope that leads up to the boat. It's sort of a very short, unnecessary decompression. I, we you do it as a precautionary thing, but... And there we are on the line. You'll see the guys coming up, and you know, we're coming up nice and slowly, and letting all the all the nitrogen out of the blood. Here we are on the surface, back at the boat. You can see Lauren on the right there, and I can't remember the name of the gentleman on the left. Uh, this video here is now picking up on our dive two, which was strictly a reef dive, and I'm coming down once again on a a queen angel fish. You can see there's like two little holes here. There she is peeking out at us, she or he, I don't know. Um, but it's got like a back and a front and it keeps going back and forth in that little tunnel there. There's Todd. Todd wanted to hang upside down and say hi to his friends. So, hi Todd. These dives are all escorted by a dive master. They, they lead us all over the reef, and that way we don't get lost, and you know, we can find our way back to the dive boat pretty easy and still explore a fairly good-sized piece of the reef. If I was here by myself and didn't know the area, I'd stay fairly close to the boat and kind of not see as much as I would on an escorted dive. So unless you know the area, it's real easy to get out there and if you're not familiar with how to use a compass and a compass by the way is one of the best tools you can have underwater because you really don't have nearly as many visual cues where you are so having that escort lets you see more of the reef in that short period of time although I did notice these pipes are crisscrossing the reef I don't know what they are if they're you know, cables of some sort, if they're electrical, if they're something else, I'm not sure, but they definitely go back and forth over this area, and uh, I'm fairly certain you could use them as a navigation aid to figure out where you were on the reef if you just follow a pipe. These little sand channels between the main bodies of coral usually run straight towards the beach. Oh, there's a little trunk fish, a little guy down there. Just uh, They blow little puffs of water on the bottom and try and uncover food. So they'll stop once in a while and kind of, you'll see a little puff of water uh, spat out. and Just... just Trying to get some video of the little guy without harassing him. Here's a good shot of a couple guys from the dive boat. Just ahead and to the right of that diver is a turtle making its way along right at the edge of the murk so kind of hard to make the actual turtle out but he's just slowly swimming along there relaxed a 
that I think is a, a French angelfish. I'm not sure. Fairly big, uh, about the size of a good eight inch skillet. Maybe a little bigger and it's biting that coral there, getting itself a snack. You see a couple different kinds of fish here that do eat the coral and as you're diving along, you'll hear this popping sound, uh, almost like somebody tapping something and it's the, the sharp beaks of these fish chewing into the hard coral. This is an interesting shot of uh, just kind of like going over the reef. I wanted you to see all the fish that kind of hover above the reef there. Now, on some reefs, you'll see just massive, massive schools of fish, really a whole lot of fish going back and forth and very, very busy places. I don't know if, uh, if, if this is kind of calmed down. Maybe it's a less heavily populated reef. Uh, but you know, there, there you'll see you know, an example of some of the, the fish that, you know, the population of the fish that's there hanging out at the reef. And once again, a lot of the murk left over from Ernesto. Still, uh, this is a very good dive, in my opinion. I'm used to diving inland in the lakes and whatnot, and I don't get out to the Caribbean nearly often enough. So seeing a nice reef like this is a, a rare treat. And as you're swimming through this, the haze kind of makes it interesting sometimes because there'll be something that you won't see and then you'll make out a shape on the reef. There's another one of our fellow divers. And I, I try to get shots of the, my buddies so that when I share these videos, they can see themselves and you know, have a record to show their friends. Like, hey, here I am on a reef underwater. Um, but as I was saying with the Merc, you know, it's almost kind of nice because you'll see a shape, something moving, some sort of outline, and then it'll resolve itself as you get closer. And you say, oh, wow, that's a turtle or oh, there's a shark there or, you know, whatever, some larger marine critter that, that you might, um, you, know, you don't see it at first or can't figure out what it is. And it's come like, wow, there it is. Nice little surprise. Now well, here's some more of the smaller animals. I mean, there, there's people that dive and they spend, you could spend a, a great deal of time just staring at this one head, coral head here and look at all the different little fish on it and find the shrimp and various things that live there. A lot of people mistake the stuff attached to it for plants. Most of these things aren't plants. These are animals and they just attach themselves to the reef and that's their whole life. They, they live right there. I think that's Todd again. And one last shot of the reef. Yeah. So that's St. Croix. Fun dive.